it's near impossible to look at anything or consume anything that's not going to leave you comparing yourself. It's not just that somebody has something that you don't have. You also have things that other people don't have. Ooh, I'm about to preach. Wait a minute. This is good. I didn't even fully... Okay. Sorry. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Walk Podcast, episode 21. I am your host, Sam. If you are new here, I post all things lifestyle, faith, and occasional vlog here and there, although I have been slacking on that front. Um, But this channel is essentially a video diary of my life. I started this podcast a little over a year ago, and it has just been talking about navigating my faith, navigating dating, new friendships, and just how I'm evolving as I get older, hence the name The Walk. This has been my walk, my journey, and it's been really cool to share this part of my life with you and be able to relate to some of you on similar topics that we're kind of going through at the same time. So this podcast has been a blessing to me, and um, I'm glad you guys seem to be enjoying it, and I will be here for as long as you will have me. Really quickly, I want to remind you guys that you can listen to this podcast on Spotify. Um, I will leave the link down below. All the episodes go up at the exact same time that the video goes up on YouTube, so maybe you don't want to sit and watch the video, but you want to listen. I've gotten a couple messages recently um, that are saying, you know, I listen to the walk podcast when I'm on a walk or when I'm driving or this and that, which is so wild to me because... I listen to my favorite podcasts when I drive or when I'm doing my makeup or whatever. So it's really cool to hear where and how and when you guys listen to this. I would love for you to comment down below because I'm curious and let me know what you do when you listen to the podcast or if you just sit there and watch it, which is cool too. Um, And if you could, if you don't mind, if you wanted to rate the show, I'm not going to tell you to rate it five stars. You can rate it whatever you want. But if you want to rate the show on Spotify, It really helps me, one, see how you guys are feeling about it, and two, it kind of drives the the show forward in the algorithm. So um, I will leave the link to that down below, as well as my Instagram, TikTok, all the things. Uh, You guys have really been reposting the TikToks that I post on my podcast TikTok account, and I really appreciate it. Um, And I'm just having a good time with this, so I hope you guys are too. Um, And I hope everything is going well. We are entering spring. Well, we are in spring and I'm looking out the window right now as I film this and the trees are getting like the buds on the branches and it's the sun is shining finally. I live in New York, but lately it's been feeling like I live in Seattle because it has just been raining for weeks on end. But we're finally getting a good spring week and just the serotonin is just is just going. Um... What else has been going on? I had a really good weekend. I, you guys are going to be seeing this on a Wednesday, but I'm filming this after a long weekend, and it was a busy weekend, but man, it was it was a good one. Saturday, my best friends, Joanie and Dom, they have been on the podcast before about actually exactly a year ago now. It was last April that they were on the podcast, and um They have had their first child since then, and so their baby got baptized on Saturday, and I got to attend that, and I actually, I have to tell you, like, I was sitting there, and I had a little moment. It was mostly, like, their family, and then, like, me and another one of our friends that we've we've known each other since the fourth grade. We all grew up together, and so um, I was sitting there, and I was watching them, and I was watching her husband, Dom, specifically, and he was in his suit, and he had his hair, like, gelled all nice, and he had his wedding ring on, and was holding the baby, and I had a a little moment where I got choked up, like, because of, like, happiness for them, and it's so wild that we're at that stage in our life now, you know, I went to high school with Joenia and Dom, I've known Dom since I was a freshman in high school, And uh, they ended up going to college, the same college together, and it was there that they started dating. I don't know why I'm telling you their whole dating story, but it was just so wild in a beautiful way to see how they've matured and grown and created such a beautiful life for themselves and, oh, the most beautiful baby in the whole world. And it was just so beautiful, and I was really, really blessed to be a part of it. 
And then after that, um, both Saturday night and Sunday, I really had a couple moments of like stopping where I was and really realizing that like I was walking in answered prayers this weekend. Um, some of you guys may remember, like I sat on this very couch and I used to cry and pray for like a good community, uh, a community of like like-minded people who were also like people of faith, not to replace my friend, you know, my friends from college and, and high school. I love them all dearly. I wouldn't trade them for the world, but I also wanted friends that I could go to church with and sit with and hang out with, you know, on a Saturday night if I didn't have any other plan. You know what I mean? Like I just wanted, I was craving that community for a long time. And Saturday night I was sitting here and I hosted like a movie night and a couple of my friends came over and we watched the whole Planet of the Apes (laughs) franchise. (laughs) Um, So we sat and watched movies for like six or seven hours. Um, And my friend brought his son and he was playing with Luna and it was just so like, there was just so much love in this apartment. And then Sunday after church, our whole young adult group went to a park nearby and had a picnic together. It was like 20 of us. And I took a video of it, like a, you know, like a, one of those panned videos where I just like panned the whole group. And it was such a beautiful day. And I was just sitting and I was just like in awe of like, wow, I prayed for this. And it was just such like a, like a testimony moment. And so I just wanted to share that um, because I feel really blessed and it's crazy what can happen to your life in just a year. Um, I think I've mentioned this in September. I filmed a video to myself, for myself. Didn't post it anywhere. Don't plan on posting it anywhere. But I was essentially talking to myself and I was like, okay, right now it's September. And I was like, I'm praying and believing for you that your life is going to be filled with so many beautiful people. Your, your house, you know, your apartment that's been feeling a little lonely lately is going to be filled with love and fellowship and new friends and and I, I said in the video, I can't wait to watch this in a year to like see how much your life has changed. And it's only been what that was maybe like seven, six or seven months ago. And already like so much has changed. And um, it's just really, it's really cool to see how everything unfolds. So I guess all of that to say like, if you're going through a hard time or like things are changing, you're in uncharted territory or you're feeling a little lonely, I promise you your story is unfolding exactly the way it's supposed to and good things are coming, new memories are coming. Um, I've said this before, you know, you have not yet met everybody that's going to love you and I think that's such a beautiful thing to hold on to Um, and I wasn't even planning on saying any of this at all but um, I don't know, I just felt led to say it. So anyway, uh, feeling really really thankful and really happy and really fulfilled, which is important. So anyway, that has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about today. Um, But I wanted to talk today about the topic of confidence and most specifically or more specifically, confidence in a world of comparison. Um, Things I want to touch on today, I want to talk about, you know, looking at somebody that may have something that you don't and thinking that you need it more on like a materialistic level because we live in a very material consumer world. Um, So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how hard it is to or how hard it can be to root for people that have something that you want that you don't yet have um, and how that, you know, how that jealousy can creep in there. And I also want to talk about physical comparison Um, And feeling like you are not enough the way you, like by your default settings, right? The way you were born, that you're not enough and that physically, you know, you are not up to society's standards and you compare yourself to all these people and it makes you feel horrible. We're going to talk about all that today. Um, So I I have a couple of things I want to like share and we're also going to kind of do, it's not going to be like a Bible study, but I definitely want to get into the Bible a little more. I actually have like my physical Bible here. I want to read from it and like get into it. More specifically, we're going to read from Romans and we're going to read from Isaiah. I just finished the book of Isaiah like on my own time, my own reading time. Um, And it was a rough one. (laughs) It was a rough one. It's not rough and like as in bad. It's just kind of tarred a little bit and a little meaty. Um, But I finished it and it was in reading that that I came across a specific like 
parable or not even a parable but like a a metaphor the bible uses a lot of metaphors for things to like to teach to teach lessons that's a parable okay fine um (laughs) but i was reading it and i was like that would that like so feeds into the topic of comparison and i would love to talk about that on the podcast so that's how this episode came to be so let me get my notes because you know how i do so that was cringy i'm sorry So, like I said, we live in a world where it is pretty much impossible to not compare yourself to others. We have 24-7 access to people's achievements, people's appearances, people's milestones, um... And we all know, we all know that social media, at this point, I hope we all know (laughs) that Instagram, TikTok, social media in general, even YouTube is a highlight reel. Take me, for example. I've been on YouTube for nine years. I don't post the bad stuff. Not really. I post the good stuff, you know? I post, you know, morning routines that look all nice and and fluffy and peaceful and... (laughs) They're not always like that, you know? So social media is a highlight reel. We know this. We live in a, in a society where on TikTok, an attractive person can look at the camera and do nothing. And this is no shade. It's just, it shows where our society is now. They could do nothing except be pretty or in a man's case, have abs or whatever, wear gray sweatpants, whatever it is, if you know, you know, and get 2 million likes for it. Or more. Um, And then someone could then post a similar video, maybe doing the same thing or looking at the camera or using the same song, and they might get 10 10 likes, you know, or whatever. And then that leaves you with the feeling of like, whoa, what's wrong with me? I did the exact same thing. Am I not pretty enough? Am, am Am I not talented enough? Even though I'm sorry, I know I said no shade, but like staring at the camera and making a funny face like isn't really talent, you know? That felt mean to say, but you know, you know what I mean? Um, So, you know, that's just the society we live in. So it's, it's, it's near impossible to look at anything or consume anything that's not going to leave you comparing yourself, right? So now, since we know it's kind of unavoidable, we have to figure out ways to, to deal with that. Um, And I, I wrote down my favorite quote. I reposted this on TikTok a long time ago and I never forgot it. This quote says, social media is designed to make us feel like maybe I should be somewhere else doing something else with someone else. But if you think that your happiness is somewhere else, then it will always be somewhere else. It will never be with you. You'll never actually have it. If you think about it, that's so true. I am guilty of that. Oh, am I guilty of that? I scroll TikTok. I like TikTok. If TikTok is used properly I think it's really good I learn a lot I've you know recipes all the things like if it's used properly I really like TikTok and you some of you may know like I'm very active on TikTok and I post a lot of things too um but I'm guilty of it or somebody has like how many times are you scrolling and somebody's wearing like a nice dress and you're like whoa I want the link to that I want to wear that or um I like accessories so if I see someone wearing really cool earrings I immediately go try to look for the same pair and I'm like why like they're their they're their own person that's theirs like I don't I don't need it but it's so easy to fall into that so the first way to like go about it you hear people talk about it all the time is like be very careful of the way that you use social media be very careful of the people that you follow or the accounts that you follow and that's very true you know I I have tried to practice that myself where if I'm scrolling on my feed and I see something that makes me feel bad, fills me with um, a not so good thought about myself, about my life, about people in my life, whatever it is, um, I unfollow or like I mute or whatever so that it doesn't come up so that I don't see it. I've actually, in the last year, I have unfollowed a lot of accounts, not like 
personal people I know, but like famous accounts or like influencers or whatever, um, because it was really affecting my my mental health. But I'm reading Janine Amapola's new book. I've talked about her before. I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of her, um, and her book is actually talked about this. And she says something very important. She said, "Yes, you can unfollow the things." You can unfollow the accounts that make you not feel great. But the important part comes with how can you see that and just accept it and just be happy for the person that that's the way they look or that's the thing that they have or that's the vacation they went on and still be okay with like who you are. And that's the meat and potatoes of kind of what I want to talk about. I say meat and potatoes a lot on this podcast. That's the meat and potatoes. I don't say that in real life. I don't know where that comes from. But anyway, um, so yeah. Oh, oh, the other thing I wanted to say before I, I, I lose this. Yes, unfollowing is good. I would say also be very careful of who in like real life off off of social media, who you surround yourself with, the friends, the friends that you keep. You want to try to have people in your life that don't see things as a competition all the time that will root for you despite what they're going through. The first example that comes to mind, say you got a promotion, but your friend just got fired that's really hard. Like it's really hard for your friend to like cheer you on in that situation. Just just, for any human, you can't help but feel that pang in your chest of like, oh, that sucks. Like I, I don't even have a job and you're getting promoted. But if you can find people that despite what they have going on, and this is not just for jobs, this could be for anything. If you can find people that root for you despite what they have going on and you do the same thing to them, those are the healthy friendships that you want to keep because it it stops your environment from constantly feeling like a competition, a comparison game. It's just like you are your own individual people on your own individual timeline, doing your own or dealing with your own individual things. So I would say also try to implement that as well. Or like, you know, talking to the friend group that you have now, if it doesn't feel that way and you're like, hey guys, we need to change our mentality. Like this is how it how it should be you know what I mean um so anyway we're gonna get into the bible a little bit so let's talk about physical comparison real quick we live in a society where it's very normal now like if there's something you don't like about yourself you know your face or whatever it's very easy to just change it you know, if you have the means to do so. Now, I want to tread lightly here because I never like, listen, listen, listen. I'm on TikTok. I am aware that Christianity is kind of becoming, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, and this is something I might want to talk about in another episode. I just have to tread lightly. Christianity is becoming trendy, which in the grand scheme of things is great as long as it's genuine. Um, but some accounts can, can you tell I'm treading very lightly, can come across as holier than thou. And I think I have been guilty of that sometimes on my podcast too. And I never want to feel like that. So I never want this to be like judgmental. I never want this, to, like I'm not perfect. I have made my mistakes, but it's just that I'm learning so much. And I see the way what I am learning is changing my life and it just feels so good that I want other people to experience it as well but I often have to like sometimes I have to check myself and be like Sam maybe there was a different way to say that so I want you to know that I'm not sitting here like I'm perfect I'm not sitting here like I'm judging anybody for anything that they have done or want to do or anything like that okay I have I mean maybe I've never gotten a nose job or anything done to my face but like I've dyed my hair I've been blonde was I born blonde no you know, um, what else have I done? I mean, I haven't really changed too much, but you know what I mean? Like I have done, I I'm guilty of it too. Okay. So I never want to sit here and be like judgmental, but we live in a world where, you know, again, if you have the means to do so, cause these things are really expensive, but you're like, I hate my nose. I really like her nose. I want her nose. It's very sad. Like I, I see a lot of it. And the, the reason I say it's, it's getting sad is because it's getting younger and younger. These ages are getting younger and younger. I saw a girl on TikTok. She's like 19 years old. She had nice teeth and she got veneers. And again, no shade. Like if that's what you want to do, like 
do it. But I hate that people feel that they need to do that is what I'm saying. And I would love for everyone to get to the point, but in our society, it's so hard. I would love for everybody to get to the point where it's like, I was born this way and that's it. Like, this is the way I was supposed to be born. There's nothing wrong with me. That person looks like them and I look like me. I love the, I've, I heard this comparison when I was in high school and I never forgot it. It's like a rose and a daisy are both beautiful flowers. They smell good, they're beautiful colors, but they look absolutely nothing alike. One's beauty does not take away from the other's beauty and vice versa. And that's how, I, that's the way I would love for people. That's like where I would love people to get to that point. And I, I wish like, I, I want to get to that point too. Because of course I'm, I'm human. I, I compare myself all the time. Um, so I'm working on this with you. Okay, so let's, let's get into the Bible. Before we get into the actual like Bible study part, because I'm actually going to like read a little bit more than I usually do. But I will say transitioning into this Bible talk now we were made exactly the way we were supposed to be by our creator right this is the truth that I believe right so I'm going to speak on on my truth I believe that I was I was made by my creator and my creator doesn't make mistakes so the hair that I was given the nose that I was given my nose is crooked that's the that's the nose I was born with this eye I think it's this eye Where's this eye? I don't remember. One of my eyes looks a little more like closed than the other one. If you look really carefully, I'm like pointing out all my insecurities, like look at my face. Um, but those are things that I, that I have. This side of my mouth actually droops a little bit more than this side. Um, and I was born that way and I'm okay with it. It took me a long time. Um, even now, sometimes like this is, I always say this is like my bad side, this is my good side. Like I still feel like that sometimes where like I want to take pictures on this side of my face, you know, Um, but like that's just the face that I was born with. And so I wanted to talk about Luke 12 verse 7. It says the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. I know the whole flock of sparrows thing might seem a little random, but the the main point of this verse is like, he knows every single hair on your head because he created it. Um, Ephesians 2.10 tells us that we are God's masterpiece. And that's, I've, I've read that a couple times throughout the Bible in various different places that we are called God's masterpiece. He made us exactly the way we were supposed to be. And we, we go through experiences exactly the way we were supposed to. It's all part of his plan because we are his masterpiece. And he sees you as so valuable. He sees you as so beautiful. Whether you are a man, whether you are a woman, it doesn't matter. He thinks that you are beautiful. Like he made you and then he stands back and he's like, Ooh, I did a good job, right? So let's look into the book of Isaiah. And like I said, I read that on my own time. There's 66 chapters in it. So it took me like a month, a month to get through it, a little over a month. And if you don't know, it's basically Isaiah, I I wrote it down. It's a beautiful prophetic picture of Jesus, the Messiah, the one who would come to save, redeem, and restore people to God. So it's all about, all about that, about how, you know, like the ruin of Jerusalem and how that there's there's um the messiah coming that's going to restore everything back to normal and make a new kingdom of god and all the things okay so let's look at isaiah i don't think i had it bookmarked which i should have here it is so i want to look at isaiah 45 verses 9 through 12 i believe okay yeah here it is and if you're if you're new to the Bible or reading the Bible. Um, if you're reading this on your own, it may look a little different. The words might be a little different. There are different translations. Um, they all say the same thing pretty much, but some are, they use different words. So some are easier to understand than others. I use the New Living Translation, which is one of the easier ones. Um, so if you read this on your own, it might look a little different, but the message is the same. So 45 verse nine through 12. What sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Does a clay pot argue with its maker? 
Does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it, saying, stop, you're doing it wrong? Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be? How terrible it would be if a newborn baby said to its father, why was I born? Or if it said to its mother, why did you make me this way? This is what the Lord says, the Holy One of Israel and your creator. Do you question what I do for my children? Do you give me orders about the work of my hands? I am the one who made the earth and created people to live on it. With my hands, I stretched out the heavens. All the stars are at my command. So there's a lot to unpack here. The, the beginning is the part that I really wanted to talk about. Does a, plot, does a clay pot argue with its maker? Does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it saying, stop, you're doing it wrong? So he is the creator. He has a vision. He is creating you exactly the way he intended to. You wouldn't say to a painter who made a beautiful painting, right, on display for millions of people to see, right? Let's just say it's a really, really famous painting. The Mona Lisa, let's just say. Would you tell the artist, you did that wrong? No, because you can't... My sister is an artist, for example, okay? Take this, take this example. This is better. My sister is an artist. She had one of her pieces of art displayed um, at an art show. And the art show, the people who work at the exhibit itself, they hang up all the pieces of art. So she went for a walkthrough before the art show was supposed to start. And her painting was flipped on its side. It was supposed to be vertical. They thought it was supposed to go horizontal. And she looked at it and she said, that's wrong. That needs to be fixed. Because it was her vision. She knew what her piece of art was supposed to look like. And to them, it didn't look wrong. But to her, she knew that it in fact was wrong and no one could argue with her because it was her vision and she made it exactly the way that, that it was supposed to be made. And that's what he did with you and with me. And I want to go to Romans chapter 9. And the, the really cool thing about the Bible is that a lot of things... I'm still learning where things are in the Bible, guys. Um... The cool thing about the Bible is a lot of things are um, like reiterated. There's a lot of repetition in the Bible. And I always take like the things that are repeated as like the really important things because you, re you reiterate what is important. So this clay potter thing comes up elsewhere in the Bible. So we're going to look at Romans chapter 9 verses 20 and 21. So verse 20 says, no, don't say that. Who are you, a mere human being, to argue with God? Should the thing that was created say to the one who created it, why have you made me like this? When a potter makes jars out of clay, doesn't he have a right to use the same lump of clay to make one jar for decoration and another to throw garbage into? Now this is interesting because the clay pot, that part's the same, right? The second part can't the artist make one jar for one purpose and one jar for another? Ooh, I'm about to preach. Wait a minute. This is good. I didn't even fully... Okay, sorry. The potter is making, out of the same piece of clay, he's making two different objects for two separate purposes. Okay? Not to say... I'm not going to say one is garbage and one is... That's not what I'm saying. It's just... It's a metaphor, right? So from that, I take that to say... He can make me for one purpose and you for another. That's why we're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be the same. You can't compare it because they weren't meant to be compared. I have a friend who I would love for you guys to meet him on the podcast one day, and I think you will at some point. I've talked about him before, I think. He has been through some stuff. He has seen some things. He has done some things. And there's no shame at all. Because, and I've told him this, he can now reach people, now knowing what he knows and now having the Holy Spirit in his life, now having God as a part of his life, he can reach people that I would never be able to reach. He can reach a whole other type of person. He can relate to them in a way that I never will be able to. That's not a coincidence. That's not a mistake. God had that happen on purpose. Yes, he makes us all the same, like, foundation-wise, but he uses us for different purposes. So you may go through something and you're like, this is the most painful thing I have ever gone through. 
Why am I going through this and no one else in my life has to deal with it? There could be, there's a reason. There's a reason why, because now you can take what you have gone through and you can be sympathetic to people that have gone through something similar that other people can't reach. Whether that's, I mean, that could be anything. That could be, you know, and this is going to be sensitive. I'm just, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to name them, you know, the loss of a child, um, miscarriages, um, being cheated on, um, so many things, you know, the loss of, of a best friend, like so, so many things, illnesses, illnesses is a big one. You can take all of your experiences and use them in a way that nobody else can. That's why we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to look different. We're supposed to do different things. We're supposed to think differently. You know, bio- biologically, whoa, <laughs> science was not my thing. Biologically, yes, our brains are all like made the same, right? But our minds are different. Our experiences are different. I feel like I'm repeating myself. But you understand what I mean. You were made this way for a reason. And again, like, I, 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 it's tricky because, like, little things like dyeing your hair, right? Like, I've done that. Do I think that, that that's the worst thing in the world? No, right? We all dye our hair. We all, not we all, but, like, we all do little things like that or we get, like, piercings and, like, ta- I have two tattoos, you know, like, little things like that and I get it. Um, and I, I, I'm not the type where I think, you know, that you get a tattoo, you're going to hell. Like, that's not, that's me, me personally, that's not what I believe, but I know you, I have to tread carefully, like I said before. Um, but like the big things where you feel like you're not good enough or you, you, you don't look good enough or you haven't experienced certain things that you think you should have at this point that other people have. It's all... I was about to curse. It's all, it's all BS. Um, it's, it's just, it's not accurate. And I just want, I want to drive that home to you and to me that what somebody has, you don't necessarily need it. That's their story. That's their timeline. Um, and you know, you have things you have to keep in mind that it's not just it like it goes both ways it's not just that somebody has something that you don't have you also have things that other people don't have right that make you you and that's the beautiful thing and that's the way it should be so i hope that all makes made sense um and i just really love this analogy of like the clay potter the potter and the clay and you know the artist and he makes no mistakes guys He makes no mistakes, and I promise you that you are beautiful in his eyes as well. Just like we all have different passions, like those passions were put in your heart for a reason. Those passions, those things that you feel that like really fulfill you and make you happy, those are from God. Those were put there on purpose for your purpose and for your calling, right? For example, I have such a passion for social media and content creation. A lot of my best friends, literally the opposite like they don't even some of them don't even have social media I believe it was put on my heart for a reason because I want to do things like this and this fulfills me and this makes me happy and this makes me feel like I am a vessel to you guys from God right like this is not coming from me I'm just the vessel speaking these things to you does that make sense um so those passions that are in your heart pay attention to them don't ignore them because they're there for a reason and it's okay to have different passions than the people around you. It's the way it should be. Um, and, you know, if you are in a, a time in your life where you really don't feel comfortable in your own skin or you don't feel like, um, you know, adequate enough or whatever, it's okay to just ask for peace, to just pray about it. Like I've told you before, prayer shouldn't be scary. It's not a big thing. It's not, it shouldn't be this super dramatic thing. Just talk to him like you were talking to me. Like talk to him like you're talking to a friend. And just ask for peace. You know, Lord, if you if you would help me feel comfortable in my own skin, if you would help me feel comfortable with my appearance, if you would, you know, fill fill the void that's in me that makes me feel like I need to be something else or someone else. 
And little by little, you'll see that it'll change for you. And maybe in the beginning, you might have to fake it till you make it. Um, but then it's going to become part of your routine and it, you're actually not going to have to fake it anymore. Um, and so all of this helps too with like cheering people on when you ha- when they have something that you don't. You know, for example, you guys know one of my dreams, perhaps the biggest one, is to get married and have a family one day, right? That's not a secret. I'm very open about that. And yet I'm at a point now, and last year it might've been a little bit different just because I was going through more of a painful time last year, but I've gotten to the point where now I can sit at my best friend's baby's baptism and I can cry tears of joy for them because I know that that's their story and mine is different. I know that maybe there are more things that I have to do before I get to that chapter of my life, right? Maybe more things online, maybe more more exploring more passions that I didn't even know I had yet, you know? Everybody's timeline is different and my hope and my prayer is that we could all get to that place at some point. Um, so I think I will leave it there. Um, this was a little bit of a shorter episode, I think, um, which is fine. I'd rather it be, you know, quality over quantity. So... I hope that uh, this video touched you, this episode spoke to your heart, um, and remember that you are beautiful, and you are exactly the way you're supposed to be, and I love every single one of you. I love reading your comments. I love reading your Instagram DMs. I love all of it. Thank you for your support on every platform that I am on. I really appreciate you guys, and I feel so blessed. So thank you for being here, and I will see you guys in my next episode.